Okay guys, back again, more Q&A. Uh, I'm gonna try to get this one done in a somewhat shorter than Lawrence of Arabia duration video, but uh, no promises. Mosin asks, I have a problem with the head through in the snatch. The problem I have is when at the bottom position, I push my head through quite a bit, so my chest falls and the bar ends up behind me. Any tips on how to fix this issue? Yes, quit pushing your head so far through. Um, I say that somewhat jokingly, but honestly, try not pushing your head so far through. Uh, you know exactly what the problem is, so quit doing it. Um, so a couple things. You, when you are moving under a lift, uh, there is a tendency for most people to let the bar do what it wants to do and then chase after it with their body and try to, to sneak themselves under the bar rather than bringing the bar into the position they need it to be in to receive it optimally, right? So in other words, in a snatch, you need to sit into a perfect overhead squat position and you need to bring the bar to you so that it is in the position you want it to be, right? If you leave that bar in front of you, for example, you're going to have to reach your head and your chest to get under it and you're going to end up in that position where you're leaning too far forward. In order to be balanced, your arms have to be too far back and that's a weak position. That's how you lose bars behind you, one of the ways. Um, you you have to always have that in your head conceptually. Like you are the master of your destiny. You move the way you need to move, get into the positions you need to get into and make the damn bar come with you. Okay, so the moment you allow that bar to get out of your desired uh, you know, trajectory, your desired balance, position, whatever, it's done. You know, the rest of that is just damage control. You're just mitigating the problem you already allowed to happen. You are not ever going to get back to the perfect lift. Uh, so you, you've got to start the lift with control and then maintain that control from start to finish. Um, so a couple ways to really get more comfortable in that position uh, and to, to reinforce it to a point where you're not having to consciously think so much about it is number one, the most Basic would be a snatch press. Um, if you want to make turn that into a mouthful, snatch grip press behind the neck, but that's totally unnecessary. Uh, so get your hands in your snatch uh, width grip, put the bar behind your neck just like you're going to back squat it. Just, you know, lock your shoulder blades into the correct position, which is fully retracted and upwardly rotated. I have a couple of videos and articles on that, and press that bar straight up. Right, it's it's really straightforward. If you put the bar behind your neck, you will naturally incline your torso a little bit forward, have your head a little bit forward so the bar can get past your skull without cracking it. Don't change those positions. Keep your head and trunk in that exact same position and press the bar straight up. Keep those shoulder blades uh, retracted really forcefully the whole time. Uh, you know, a few sets of 10 of that in a warm up every single day, or at least every single day you're going to snatch is a great way to get started. Um, if you have the mobility, which you should eventually, um, kind of move to a more advanced version of that, which is a press and snatch, or some people call it a Zotz press, although a Zotz press is technically clean grip from the front in a front squat, but uh, we won't hold that against you. Uh, so press and snatch, exact same pressing motion, but you're sitting in the bottom of a squat. Uh, to kind of work into that, you can start with the bar already overhead, squat down, and then lower it and kind of touch and go. Um, as you get more mobile and a little bit stronger, you can start with it on the back of your neck, get to the bottom of the squat and then press out from the bottom. Uh, in any case, that's kind of combining, um, you know, comfort and, and a real solid bottom position. Uh, and then also learning how to maintain, but you know, only as much forward inclination of the trunk as necessary to get that correct overhead position, which is head through the arms, bar over the back of the neck, right? We're not leaning way forward. There's a reason they don't build skyscrapers like this, right? We're not gonna be perfectly vertical. Um, but we need to have the arms pretty close to vertical in order for them to be stable. And in order to do that with the bar over the back of the neck so that we can have the shoulder blades in the right position, the trunk has to be inclined slightly forward. Um, snatch push press would be another one where you are going to be able to get a lot more weight up overhead, um, but you are still actively pressing the bar all the way through that range of motion from the back of the neck to the overhead position, which means you're developing... Um, more familiarity and more comfort with that position and, and the ability to kind of maintain constant tension uh, and force in that upper back in particular. Um, and it, you, you get a lot of confidence by being able to drive up heavier weights and really directly vertically, because again, you're starting with your trunk and your head in the exact 
position you need them when the bar is overhead, not changing them, just pressing the bar straight up and learning not to press it backward, um, which is a, a huge mistake people make when they're working with light weights, right? They, Show me your overhead position and the thing's 16 inches behind their necks. Um, you can't hold a bar like that with it's got, well, when it's got weight on it. So uh, next one would be a, a heaving snatch balance. So you're gonna start with the bar behind your neck. You're gonna dip and drive like you would for a push press, but that dip and drive is not really meant to elevate the bar. It's meant to kind of momentarily unweight it so that you're able to get down under it, right? So you don't wanna drive that bar way up, fix it overhead, then squat down. That's basically a snatch push press or a snatch power jerk plus an overhead squat. We want an actual snatch balance. Um, what makes it a heaving snatch balance rather than a snatch balance is that your feet are gonna start and stay um, in the receiving position, in your squat position. Um, ideally, keep them totally flat against the ground. And again, what that does is it allows you to better maintain constant tension against the bar. There's never any moment of slack where suddenly you're, that bar is maybe floating uh, out of position and you're trying to catch it again and, and bring it back into place. Um, so it's a little bit like a snatch push press as you're squatting, right? It's a little bit more of a controlled motion um, relative to a full-blown snatch balance, which is extremely explosive. And, and it's a lot of movement of the feet and you're really punching down under rather than more of a controlled push. Um, and then the last one I would, I would suggest messing around with is what I call a push jerk and snatch, which is essentially a cheating press and snatch. In other words, you're going to start in the bottom of the squat, uh, snatch grip behind the neck. You're going to come up a little bit out of the squat to kind of uh, get a little upward momentum on the bar and then sit back down into the full squat as you push the bar up into that locked out overhead position. So uh, imagine it like a push jerk, which is where your feet stay planted on the ground. They don't ever come up and move. And it's essentially, rather than starting in a standing position, you're starting in a squatting position, pretty simple. Uh, but that'll essentially allow you to train all those good things about the press and snatch where you're getting a really comfortable in that um, very bottom snatch receiving position finding that correct overhead position with the arms, with the upper body, uh, you know, how far to put your head through, all that kind of stuff. But you can use a lot more weight because of that little cheat with the legs. Um, so add a couple of those exercises to your, your training, uh, you know, two to three days a week. Snatch press, press and snatch uh, in particular, you can use those as warm-ups. Obviously, don't go super heavy on those things right before you do heavy snatches, uh, but get a, enough weight on it where you have some feedback on your position, right? If it's a PVC pipe or even an empty bar, it's it's too easy to get way far behind um, and, and you know, lean too far forward and not recognize that you are in a position that is incredibly precarious that will not work once you're snatching weight. Um, and then with those positions really comfortable and established, work on um, tall snatches, right? And in focusing on, like I said earlier, moving into that perfect overhead position and bringing the bar to you. That bar has to come back into position, not you lean to get under the bar, right? So, uh, you know, bar goes over the back of the neck, back of the neck does not go under the bar, right? There's a, a very important distinction there. Um, so tall snatches, snatch from power position or dip snatches will add a little bit more where you're, you're actually getting some elevation with the legs and hips, uh, but still largely focused on that pull under, which is going to help you uh, kind of emphasize the technique of that and the position of that without having to focus on so many other things. Um, and throw all that stuff in pretty regularly. And again, remind yourself every single time you do a snatch, that you have to be in charge of the bar. You decide where your body goes and you make the bar come with it. You never chase after the bar because you fudged it up right from the start. Greg Everett with Catalyst Athletics here. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. If you have questions, post them in the comments. I answer all of them. Also check out catalystathletics.com for the biggest Olympic weightlifting exercise library out there, along with hundreds of free articles and videos and other resources for both athletes and coaches.